Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am your host Geekman and today I'm going to teach you how to create Harry Potter style text effects in Photoshop. Now first a couple of assumptions that I'm getting out of the way right from the beginning. The first one being that you're using Photoshop CC 2015 or later. If you're using an earlier version of Photoshop some of the effects may not work as expected. Second, I am using Windows. If you're using a Mac, then whenever I say hit the control key on your keyboard, that means hit the command key. And when I say hit the option key, uh, the alt key on the keyboard, that means hit the option key on a Mac keyboard. So with those assumptions out of the way, uh, let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is create a brand new document. So hit control N on your keyboard. And uh, in the new option, in the new image dialog box, we're going to name this Harry P text. Okay, and we're going to make the width 3840 pixels, height 2160 pixels, resolution 150 pixels per inch, RGB color, background contents is going to be black, so click on the square, and let's make it all black, which is all zeros. Adobe RGB 1998 and square pixels. Let's hit OK and we're ready to begin. Now the first thing we need to do is make sure that our foreground and background are their default black and white. So let's hit D on the keyboard to make them black and white and then hit X to switch the black and white so that white becomes the foreground and black becomes the background. The next thing that we're going to do is create a brand new layer above our black background layer. Now you can do that by clicking on the little uh, new layer icon down here like so or you can hit Control Alt Shift and N on the keyboard to bring up a new layer. So let's rename this as clouds uh, and let's change the layer opacity of this layer to just 50 percent. And then what we're going to do is we're going to render clouds on here. So let's go up here to filter. Let's go to render and go to clouds. And we now have our clouds. So that was easy. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new layer. So since I showed you how to just click on the little layer icon, let's try hitting the keyboard shortcut, which is Control, Alt, Shift, and the letter N, and that brings up a brand new layer. Let's rename this as Zoom, so Z-O-O-M for Zoom. Uh, and what we're going to do now is we're going to use our brush tool to create a line over here that we will then turn into a zoom effect uh, from the center of the document. So the way that we do that is we select our brush tool by hitting B on the keyboard, which will bring up the brush tool, or you can click over here on the brush tool icon on your toolbar. And let's make it uh, 1200 pixels in size. Mode must be dissolve. The opacity should be 50% and the flow is 100%. And then right here in the center of the document, right along the center, I just want you to click and drag once across to make a line of scattered dots like so. Doesn't have to be straight, doesn't have to be perfect. You can even go back and do it again if you want if you didn't like what happened the first time. But I'm just going to add in a dot towards the center to make that more of a focal point. So now you've got uh, scattered dots left and right and a little bit more uh, massed center of dots. So there we have what we need in order to create the blurred zoom effect. So what we're going to do next, uh, I'm going to hit V on my keyboard to go back to my uh, move tool so you can see an arrow, uh, but you don't have to. I'm going to go up here to filter. I'm going to go to uh, blur and then to radial blur. And in radial blur, you're going to make the amount 100. We're going to make our blur method zoom and the quality is going to be best. You can hit OK and then Photoshop will work its uh, zoom magic and blur all of these dots into a uh, what looks like a burst from the center coming out towards you. Uh, and that's what we're really looking for. So as you can see, that's what just happened. It's a quick and easy way to make this effect. There are other ways, but this way works perfectly well for our purposes. Okay, then what we want to do is change this uh, zoom layer's opacity to only 70% because we don't want it to be such a uh, uh, overpowering part of this. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a new layer and we're going to do that by just clicking on the new layer icon here. We're going to name this as color and what we're going to do is we're going to change our foreground color over here by clicking on it and we're going to change it to a new color and that color is going to be 1E5283 okay a nice deep blue color hit OK and then all we're going to do is fill this layer with 
the foreground color, which is Alt and Backspace. And that fills it with the color. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set this uh, colors layers layer mode to overlay, and we're going to change its opacity to only 40%. Okay, so it just slightly looks as if it's uh, overpowering all of this and, and uh, changing the color to a nice bluish color. Uh, the last thing that we have to do in order to get the background right before we actually put on the text is we're going to create a new curves adjustment above all of these layers. Uh, to darken out the outside and make it more of a spotlight towards the center. So the way that we're going to do that is, as I said, create a curves level adjustment. So hit curves level adjustment. And then what you're going to do is uh, grab the right hand uh, square in this, uh, in this uh, box that shows you uh, where the colors are. Uh, and you are going to drag that all the way down until you can barely make out any color. Somewhere around here-ish looks good right about the bottom black line going across. Not the very bottom, but the bottom black line. Okay? Doesn't look like much now, but bear with me. Then what you're going to do is up here in the upper left-hand side of the Properties dialog box for your Curves Adjustment layer, you're going to click on the Masks icon. And once you've done that down here where it says Feather, you're going to change that to 175. And what that's going to do is any... Um, Anything that you draw on here now uh, and fill with color is going to be automatically feathered by 175 pixels. That will give everything a nice feathered edge. That way you don't have to actually change the options on any of your tools. You can just draw on the mask itself and it will feather. Let's show you how that works. Uh, select your elliptical marquee. You can do that by hitting M and then Shift M to switch between uh, elliptical and uh, rectangular marquees, but you can also just click and hold down and then select elliptical marquee. And then what you want to do is make sure that it's on new, make sure feather is zero because once again the curves adjustment layer will feather it for us. Anti-alias design style is normal. And then you just want to draw a, uh, a nice uh, ellipse like so. Make sure that it's centered. Uh, you can just click inside of it and drag it until you see the lines that show up telling you that it is exactly centered. And then we're going to fill that with white. And you do that by hitting Control and Backspace to fill it with white. Okay, then you can hit Control D to deselect. And as you can see, we now have a centered area of our image that is basically clear of the darkness around the outside, which helps make this look a little creepy. Plus, you've got this uh, burst of, of light coming from the center, it looks like, or you're zooming towards the center, whichever way you want to look at it. And on this is where our text, our Harry Potter style text, will sit. So we now have our background. Now, for the background layer here that we didn't touch that's all black, just click on the little lock icon to unlock it, and we can name that just black just so that we know what it is. And then let's select all of these layers by selecting the bottom one, then holding down Shift and selecting the top layer, which is our Curves layer. And then we can drag them down to the Group icon, the Group icon down there. And then we can name all of this as Background, like so. And that's all that we have to do for our background. We now have a nice background for our text. So let's begin with our text. The first thing that we need to do is set our foreground color to the color that we want our text to be. And for this tutorial, we want the text to be a very light gray. So let's click on the foreground color there. And then we're going to change the color to D0, 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 which is this very light gray. Now you can use whatever color that you want, but this uh, works best for this tutorial. So hitting OK, we are now ready to put in our text. So let's go to our text tool hitting T on the keyboard. And the text that I'm using, the font that I'm using, I mean, is Harry P. Now I've got a link to that in the description below where you can download it from dafont.com, but feel free to use any font that you think works with this effect. So uh, we're using Harry P at 350 points, sharp, centered, and again, the color that we're using is D0, 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 which is this very light gray. Go to the center of your document or thereabouts, click and let's write in our text. I am going to use pixel magic because that is my name and then we're going to fix the kerning between the letters by putting our uh, cursor in between the letters uh, and then holding down alt and using the left and right arrow you can then bring the text closer or further apart from each other and I want it to be fairly close 
Uh, the L can be closer. Let's go over here and make the A a little bit closer. Uh, that looks good. The G, the I definitely needs to be closer. The C, I. Uh, this looks pretty good. It's a little tight, I think. So let's make everything one click away like that. Uh, pixel magic pixel looks pretty good. I think that's good. So then we hit the check mark up here and we have our text. Now I'm going to go back to my move tool just so that I can move it to the center. You don't have to if you do not wish to, but I'm going to do it just so that uh, you can see it a little bit more easily. Uh, so there we have it in our center right over our uh, big uh, spotlight, say, so to speak. So everything that we want to do to make this, uh, this text look like the Harry Potter text that you see on posters for the movies can be done with layer styles and only layer styles, which means this text will be fully editable once you're done. And you can apply this layer style to any text at any time just by saving it as a layer style uh, that you want to use. So let's, uh, let's turn this into a nice layer style that will look like Harry Potter uh, poster text. So going down here, we're going to start with bevel and emboss. Now for bevel and emboss, what we're going to do is inner bevel, chisel hard, depth is going to be 200%, uh, direction is going to be up, size is going to be 250 pixels, soften is going to be zero pixels, angle that we're going to use, make sure that you uncheck use global light. You don't want to ever really use glo global light. Uh, and you want this to be at 30 degrees and altitude at 20 degrees. The gloss contour that we're using is going to be ring, which is this guy right down here. Uh, Anti-alias is unchecked. We want the highlight mode to be lighten and the color is going to be white. Uh, which is all F's down there. Uh, uh, opacity is going to be at 60%. Shadow mode is going to be linear burn, and that's black, which is all zeros. Uh, opacity is going to be at 60%. Then we're going to add on a contour above that, and that is going to be using the contour of this, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Cove Shallow. Uh, Anti-alias is checked, and range is going to be only 60%. Then we're going to throw on a texture onto this to give it a little bit more of a pitted, scarred, old kind of texture. And we're going to, uh, the texture that we're using, the pattern that we're using actually, it can be found if you go to the sprocket over here. So uh, let me show you how to do that. Instead of clicking on the pattern itself, click on the little arrow. Then you go over here to the sprocket and its arrow. And the place that you can find this is you can find this under rock patterns. So you want to go down here to rock patterns. You want to um, you want to override it. You know, you can append it if you want, but overriding does the same thing and keeps it a little neater and clean. You hit OK, and the marble texture that we're looking for is right there, light marble. Okay. Once you have that, the scale that we're using is 100, and the depth that we're using is only negative three percent. Invert is unchecked, linked with layer is checked. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put on a stroke, and the stroke that we're using is going to be a size of 1. Position is centered, blend mode is normal, opacity is going to be 65%, overprint is checked, the, fill, the type is going to be color, and the color that we're using here is C-E-E-E-F-F, -E -F, okay, which is a very light blue. Next up, we are going to use an inner glow, uh, and the inner glow that we're using is going to be a blend mode of screen, opacity of 40%, noise is going to be 20%. Uh, the color that we're using over here is, again, a very light blue, but CBF2FF is the color that we're using. It's slightly different, but it gives it a nice little feel. So hit OK. Then the technique that we're using is softer. The source is going to be edge. Choke is going to be zero. Size is going to be five. Then the uh, contour that we've got on here is going to be linear, which is the very first one and the default for uh, contours. Uh, Anti-aliased is checked and range and jitter are both all the way to the left. So uh, range is 1% and jitter is 0. Uh, then we've got two more things to do. The first one is going to be a gradient overlay. Uh, and what we're doing here is a blend mode of multiply. Dither is checked. Opacity is going to be at 25%. Now you could make this a little lighter, like so, or a little darker, like so, depending on uh, how it looks to your eye, but I find that 25% works 
very well. Uh, reverse is unchecked, align with layer is checked, and the style that we're using is linear. Then the actual gradient that we're using is just a two-tone gradient, and it goes from a darker blue to a lighter blue. And the darker blue, here on the left, is going to be 337489. Hitting OK. Uh, we are then going to look over here on the right-hand side. The lighter blue is going to be 8DDCF6. Okay, and then we have our gradient uh, style linear. I said that already. Angles is going to be 90 degrees because you want it to go from the top to the bottom. And the scale is going to be 100%. Now, the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to put in a little bit more of, uh, of uh, weathering and pitted and scars uh, that you can find on the uh, on the text and we're going to do that with another pattern overlay on top of this so the pattern overlay that we're using is going to have a blend mode of hard light opacity is only 35 percent uh, and the pattern that we're using is called stucco and you can find that under uh, texture 2 patterns texture fill 2 uh, hit OK to uh, overwrite and this right here uh, is your stucco 1 pattern and that's the one that we want Okay, so once you have that, you want to make the scale 300% because we want them to be big and chunky, and link with layer is checked. And that right there is all you need to make Harry Potter style text effects in Photoshop. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe. I create new tutorials every Tuesday. Once again, this is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.